What's the crack? Big dogs. Welcome. Bite to the channel. Welcome. Bite to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas, and we are doing a full draft today on Underdog Fantasy, the single greatest platform to prepare for the 2022 fantasy football season. This is a super flex draft, which they have opened up the format for recently, and we will continue to do those because those are the types of games that we play in. If you're not in a super flex league, you can super flex your fucking way out of here. We are going to do this full draft. It is 20 rounds. On underdog, there is no kickers. There's no defense. It is straight to the point, straight to the fucking mozzarella. And it's just quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, tight ends. And these are all paid leagues. All the ADP is extremely sharp. People ain't fucking around. People not taking Taco Wallace in the seventh round. Shout out Steen. Um, so you get a very good idea of where, you know, the, the trends and the flows of different players right now. You could see the ADPs on the left side that are already set up for you. You know, you got Josh Allen as the one. Mahomes is the two. And these update frequently, uh, hourly, maybe daily. So over the next, you know, week or so, we'll see Mahomes probably drop a little bit from the Tyreek Hill news. And throughout this video, we're going to go over, you know, all the all the breaking news that that's occurred in free agency recently. And I've done a lot of individual videos on those. I did two different free agency recap videos. Yesterday's video was a, a top 12 rookie running back rankings videos with their player comps. So that's a sexy little featured film for you if you're in the uh, dynasty gang. Um, but yeah, man, this is going to be a little bit of a Q and a style video as long as well as, you know, drafting and giving some, some analysis on the drafts because I did. So we did a private live stream for this. I sent the link to, Anyone who's in our Discord, you can sign up for our Discord at bdge.store. And then anyone that's on our text list. And you could text this number. I'm just going to put it up on the screen for me. And uh, shout out the link to this YouTube film via text. So if you're on either of those lists or in either of those spots, you got access to this. So those are where the questions are coming from. So make sure you are in big dog country. Emphasis on the cunt. So uh, we're waiting for two people to fill this draft. We are basically, uh, yeah, we're keeping this a private live stream. We're going to take it off. And then upload it, re-upload it as like an actual edited video so you guys don't have to waste your time sitting here with me for an hour and a half in which like half of that time is just me drinking coffee. I tell you what, it's fucking hot in here, man. The fit slaps this jacket absolutely claps the cheeks, but I can't perform at my best under these circumstances. Where are the people, man? Can someone fucking join this draft? Oh, we need one more. Okay. This might fill before I even tweet it. Oh, it's fucking A. You know what? Shout out Twitter Blue. Undo. Draft filled. Love y'all. Let's get the fuck to it. Draft will start in... S oh, I got the number one overall pick. This is something that I haven't had in a minute. Brody, you're always here, Brody. You're always chilling, huh? You just stay fucking strapped for best ball drafts. It's rain, sleet, hail, snow. Okay, so I have the one-on-one -on -one pick. Uh, I, I feel like this is honestly pretty simple in Superflex, especially in Underdog's format, which is best ball. We're going to take Josh Allen. We're not going to think twice about it. Uh, with best ball, if you guys are new to Underdog, uh, it basically, you know, you draft this big team. This is going to be 20 rounds long. All of just the four skill position players, and it starts the top scoring players each week at that position based on the starting lineup setting. So it's one uh, Superflex, two quarterbacks, two running backs, three wide receivers, a tight end, and a regular flex, I believe. So basically, um, because you need to start two quarterbacks each week, they become extremely valuable in this type of format. So you're going to want to hit them early and often if you're doing the super flex tournaments. I think you need to leave the draft with at least like four quarterbacks. You know, they don't all need to be top tier premier straight from your mother's fingertips, straight from the God and type quarterbacks. But, you know, you do yourself a favor if uh, if you got a few of them off the rip and then, you know, got some back end players like even like, you know, the Mariotas and the Falcons will probably be like a ninth, tenth round pick here. And that that I'm all aboard for. So Josh Allen, easy pick there. You know, the only competition he really had for QB one was probably Mahomes or Kyler Murray. But we're seeing Murray go all the way down to the seven which I feel like is a little crazy. Like I take, I think Murray's probably going to end up being my QB two this year in fantasy. I mean, they lost Christian Kirk, but Rondell Moore, I think should be able to replace him. They re-signed Zach Ertz. I don't know, man. I'm fine with Murray. 
our dog, Cooper Cup, all the way down to the 11. I will say, you know, like even if you're in super flex drafts, these types of formats, the best ball formats, will push the quarterbacks up even further than typical. Um, yeah, so if you guys are new to underdog, also, like I said, all these drafts are paid drafts. Um, but if you deposit $10, you deposit any amount, and you're f- signing up for the first time and you use the promo code BDGE, BDGE, big dogs got to eat, or Nick BDG, whatever, um, that will give you a 100% deposit match. So whatever you throw down, it's going to be double, and you can do two times the amount of drafts on this sexy platform. The link down below will take you right to the App Store if you want to download it. You don't have it yet. So let's take a look here. So we have Dak, Russell Wilson, Joe Burrow. Interesting. I would take Burrow above these guys. Russ has obviously shot up. Um, I'm I'm really excited about him in, in fantasy this year, especially for like just season-long leagues. He's going to be Dynamite Cup down at the 111. Yep, he's the wide receiver one. Chase, man. Jamar Chase up at the 2-3. He is the wide receiver two. I was looking at ADP in one quarterback drafts on underdog. He is like the sixth overall player off the board. That is, I mean, I guess I can't say it's that surprising, but it's a little bit surprising, man. I still take the top running backs, but Cincinnati is going to be an offense that's fucking unstoppable this year. They upgraded the offensive line. They added, uh, you know, fucking three different players, Lyle Collins, Kappa, and, oh, shit, I'm on the clock. Ah, we missed Jalen Hurts by a second. Justin Fields, Kirk Cousins, Trevor Lawrence. Let's see. Some good running backs still on the board, man. Devontae Adams, Tyree Kill, two players that move teams. What I'm going to do here is probably take Fields. I think he's a good player in this type of format where you're just looking for kind of like weekly upside to fill those starting spots. And then I'm going to I'm gonna continue to take as much possible Javonta Williams as I humanly can. Like he's not going to be sitting here in the third round much longer, even in super flex leagues. I imagine he's going to start moving up to like this range. You know, the Javonta Williams, Jamar Chase. I think that's going to be like a reasonable fucking argument soon. Uh, Melvin Gordon is going to be out of there soon. I'm interested to see where Melvin Gordon goes, man, because we're seeing a lot of movement in free agency at the running back position in particular, like, you know, Chase Edmonds and Raheem Mostert signed and James Connors re-signed. Like, all these moves are starting to happen already. I haven't heard anything about Melvin Gordon being linked anywhere. But I don't think he's going to be back with Denver. Um, so I think we should draft assuming that Javante is on his own, and that would be monstrous, and now he's behind Russell Wilson, and I can't imagine why he's going all the way in the third round. So I'll solidify the two most valuable positions in this format, quarterback and running back. Again, this is half PPR. So, like, the wide receivers, man, I get it. Like, you want some guys that are good at football, but, like, if you're drafting, right, this is a big draft format. So you can have eight or nine wide receivers on your team, and all you need is three guys to finish, you know, top 15, top 20 on the week, and you're not that far down from the top guys. You can go all the way down to, like, ADPs in, you know, like Brandon Ayuk. You can literally wait till like, the ninth round, and your starting wide receivers could be Adam Thielen, Kadarius Toney, Brandon Ayuk, uh... And Christian Kirk, I guess he'll have his big games, but like, look, look how far down these guys are. Some of these good ass players. That's crazy. Are you down at one fifteen? Darnell Mooney at ninety. Like, there's so much value at wide receiver that it doesn't make sense for me to pay up at the wide receiver position this early because those are such premium picks. And when you get to that spot in the draft, when you're looking at running backs, you're looking at backup players. You're looking at Tony Pollard. You're looking at like. I mean, I guess Corderell, Miles. Actually, there, there's a little decent uh, pocket of value here at the running back position in terms of at least upside, like Chase, Miles Sanders, Corderell. You know, if you watch yesterday's video or two day, three, I don't remember. This is going to go out Saturday as an actual video, but Noah, you know, our, our guy fucking Noah, Noah Hills over here, just ripping through rookie dynasty content. Um, he's he's huge fan of Rashad Penny and thinks he could be a possible league winner this year in fantasy. So Rashad Penny down here at 113. A little bit of uncertainty. Obviously, he just re-signed. Uh, the Seahawks gave him five and a half, six million dollars to to come bite. So he will probably take the starting role. But you got to remember, Chris Carson is going to be bite, and Seattle does not have a quarterback as of right now. It's either going to be Drew Locke or you know maybe they end up with Baker Mayfield, but still yet to be seen. So in these drafts, man, these are I just can't imagine taking the wide receivers this early. So Devontae Adams, I mean, you know, he's uh, I I guess that's that makes sense why Jamar Chase would go the two because we have. Adams now in Las Vegas, and there's a little bit of uncertainty just in the terms of like the target volume, but I'm really not worried about Devontae Adams whatsoever, man. Probably won't have like the 170 target upside, but at the end of the day, man, it's like he is competing with Waller 
I still think he comes away with 150, 160 targets. I still think he's a huge problem in the red zone for defenses. So um, he'll he'll still finish as a top five, top six fantasy wide receiver. Probably maybe doesn't have the wide receiver one overall upside anymore, and that's why he drops down, whereas a guy like Chase does. But, I mean, like, listen, like, Jamar Chase is also fucking competing with T. Higgins and, and Tyler Boyd and, and Mixon for, t- like, I would almost argue Jamar Chase is better and more competition than than Adams does. We have Tyreek Hill going to Miami. I did an entire video on that um, on Thursday night, my reaction video to him going to Miami. Uh, so Ike will link that video down in the description if you want to watch a dedicated move to the impact on Miami, their offense, Jalen Waddell, Tua, uh, as well as the Kansas City side of things. What do we got here? Alvin Kamara, man, how the mighty have fallen. Alvin Kamara down at 4-5, great fucking value. Jameis Winston resigns. Let's go take a look at the chat. Actually, we'll make our picks and then we'll look at the chat. Do we take a third quarterback here? Ew, Matt Ryan. So my problem, I think a lot of people are going to like Matt Ryan. Say, oh, he's going to a good offense. He's going to be, you know, good. The problem with Matt Ryan was, and this was my take on him for a couple of years now. I was he was on a my my you know auto fade list last year because people were pumping him up as if he's a safe quarterback. The problem was all of Matt Ryan's statistics from the last few years were straight volume. The Falcons were one of the pass heaviest teams in the entire NFL. And Matt Ryan was like okay as a fantasy quarterback on the most like voluminous passing offense. He's going to the Colts, who are going to be extremely they're probably looking at Matt Ryan as Carson Wentz with a little more accuracy. The game plan in Indy is going to be exactly the same. It's going to be give Jonathan Taylor and the running backs thirty plus touches a game. So Matt Ryan is not a is not a guy that I'm like targeting. But down here is like your third quarterback. I'd probably rather take Mac Jones and see if he like progresses into a ceiling player this year. Daniel Jones, a little bit interesting, I guess, but let's see the running back position. Hmm. Let's get a little, actually, fuck, no, no, no. Did we get him? Who do we get? Okay, okay. I'm not upset, I'm, I'm not upset about Kyle Pitts. But they did have some ceiling tight ends here. I think Kyle, I mean, Kyle Pitts is going to get about a zillion fucking targets this year with Calvin Ridley gone and everyone in their offense gone. I, I was looking at these running backs, man. Like, Gibson's intriguing. Cam Akers, very intriguing. But even the guys like James Conner and Leonard Fournette down here, I, I feel like I can't really pass up on Fournette right now. I kind of, like, made that move without thinking too much. But they did just resign him. And, obviously, Brady's back. So, like... I don't know if I would expect any. Let's let's look at Fournette's games last year. Anytime you want to see game logs, I just type in the player's name plus FF, and it takes you to the FF Today website. That'll be like the top search result. Dude, like, this is insanity. Like, look at these fucking numbers, man. Like, just the volume, the touchdown numbers, but more importantly, the target numbers. Like, more often than not, he's getting six to seven targets a game. Just insane type of production and volume here. Rojo is going to be gone which means he's not splitting early down work anymore. Are they going to give someone else passing down work? Like, I don't think Gio is going to be back, and they clearly trust him as a receiver. Like, in the playoffs, nine targets, nine catches. I mean, Fournette down in the fifth round will not last long. So I'm going to grab him there, and uh, we've just got a lot of volume going on here, Javante and Leonard. All right, let's take a look at the Chizzy. In my opinion, or how, sorry, how do I convince my league to go super flex? In my opinion, so much better than standard roster. Yeah, I mean, like, it's it's a tough convincing, to be honest. It took us a couple of years to do it. I just I, I think like the best argument is just one, it, it's more relatable to real football. Two, it makes like it makes the draft way better. They might say the draft is worse, but it makes what w- the way like fantasy football is really set up right now is to just incentivize you to take the the top running backs, right? If you're not playing a full PPR league, if you're not starting three wide receivers, like everything just goes towards the running backs. It opens up positional value like it one it makes like the trade uh market way fucking bigger right because people want to trade for quarterbacks need to trade for quarterbacks so you're you're able to trade for a lot more players like if you own you know four quarterbacks in a super flex league you can trade one of those quarterbacks for a running back and it could be you know tit for tat titty for titty there and uh people will be cool I, i think the best thing is it opens up the draft it opens up draft strategy it opens up the player pool in terms of trading it makes it way 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 more uh, engaging in the same way that like half PPR t- tell them this, like in the same way that you went to half PPR because it opened up the player pool at running backs. It just took away just the guys who are workhorses. That's the same thing with super flex and quarterbacks. Again, it just opens up the player pool a little bit more and it gives the, you know, quarterbacks are the most valuable fucking position in all of football. 
And the fact that they're just useless in fantasy is stupid. Mike Davis is going to Houston. Oh, what the fuck, Ecamm Live? What kind of bullshit software is this? Um, Mike Davis going to Houston. Not big news, but news. Yeah, that's like, uh, tell you what, if I didn't have so much coffee, I would have fucking fallen asleep reading that. Where that comes from is all the boss in the, what the fuck are you saying? All the bust? All what? 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 What is what coming from? Is Stevie One Chain officially a big dog? Uh, no, he's no. I mean, he's. I haven't seen him in like two months. He's definitely not officially a big dog now. I want him to come in and do more fucking work with us. He's hilarious, and I'd like to do more content with him. And I think once we get the, the office like settled, right, and we have all the equipment and furniture and everything delivered, which we don't have at all right now. Like my my office is doing pretty well. This is is set up pretty well, but the outside shit is uh. Uh, you know, in the office is still very unsettled. So it's hard to like have consistent content done out there. But once we do, we're, I mean, we're hopefully pulling in Stevie one chance to do a ton of content. He also like never wants to come. These fucking Jersey boys never want to come into the city for some stupid fucking reason. String cheese is an underrated snack. String cheese as a snack is f disgusting. Like if I wanted cheese all over my fingers, I would just buy a bag of hot Cheetos. Like string cheese as a snack is so gross. I feel like that should be an objective take. You're just eating a block of cheese. How is that appropriate? How is that appropriate behavior? You're disgusting and you're despicable. What do we got here? All right, so we got our top tight end in Kyle Pitts, which we like, which we do like, um, because now we're down to the second tier of tight ends. Josh Jacobs, ew. Josh Jacobs. Oh, I'm glad Josh I went Josh Jacobs. How are you going to take Josh Jacobs over fucking ETN and Mitchell? See what wide receivers we got working. We don't have a wide receiver yet. Uh, I love Cortland Sutton. Actually, Deontay Johnson. I, I I am not a fan. I know you guys were you guys were popping off and ooh, Michael Thomas will be back this year too. You know what? Let's uh let's diversify a little bit and go with MT. He's dropping man. I think he'll be fine. And then ooh, should we stack him with Jameis, or should we go with a little bit of upside in Zach Wilson? I don't know why I even said upside as if like he has upside. I feel like I should probably stack here. I think Winston might have a little bit more fantasy upside, but we're going to go. I don't know. My, my gut tells me go with Mac Jones here. Good rookie season. Not great for fantasy, but like, you know, he'll take a step up. They'll get some weapons for him. So we got our third quarterback and I can probably sit on that and take like a, an upside rookie at the end of this, hoping that one of them gets a starting job or something. So fun there. Let's see. We have that big run of young wide receivers here. Amari Cooper is a really good value pick right now at the 6'8", because if they don't grab Jarvis Landry and or Will Fuller, he's going to end up being like a, a top 10 wide receiver that you're going to have to draft probably like in this range, you know, like the late third, early fourth. So I try to like the way I would think about like possible moves happening is if they are, if the ADP is baking in the worst case scenario for a player, it's a really good idea to take that player where they're getting drafted if it's worst case scenario baked in because you have to think about it this way especially this super flex league that we're in is a tournament right so there's three hundred thousand dollars in guaranteed prizes so you're competing against everyone right so you need edges everywhere it's not just you versus 11 other people so the way you want to look at it is like okay i'm competing against twenty thousand other teams right how many of those teams after news breaks of you know, those guys not signing with it or those guys signing with them, right? Like he'll go, you know, so say those those players sign with Cleveland, he's still going to go around this area. Like Amari Cooper will probably still be like late sixth, early seventh round. So the majority of teams will have a lot of Cooper in this area. However, if they don't sign, everyone that takes Cooper going forward will have used their late third, early fourth round. So it's like you competing against 20,000 other teams that have third round Amari Cooper when you have six, seventh round of Mark Cooper in your lineup. That's the way you got to look at these tournaments is players with uncertainty, especially drafting this early in the offseason, players with uncertainty, you want to grab if they're being picked at their worst case scenario. Where at, like, that's what I'm thinking about, like, you know, guys like Javante Williams, whereas uh, let's let's take other examples. Holmes, Herbert, Lamar, let's see. Uh, like Deshaun Watson would probably be a, a, an example for me. Like if he... If he get like the 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 likelihood of him getting like a four game suspension 
is probably low. He's probably going to get something bigger. You know, if he gets an eight game suspension, he's not getting picked at the two, two, you're not taking him over like Tom Brady or any of these players. He drops down. So I think that's a little bit of a risky pick. You're baking in a lot of, um, upside. Travis Kelsey. I really like this pick with Hill gone. He's probably going to get about eight bajillion fucking, um, targets this year, but you, you get the point. Like in the tournament fields, if you, if you're competing against these huge, large fields, of teams and players you want to be you want to be owning the same players as those guys but for three rounds later three rounds earlier you know do you that whole time i had the string cheese coming up on the screen huh interesting take on cheese when i just saw you mash three donuts in your face hole at once there's an i see no problems with that it's called donut sandwich sandwiches are lunch food like at no point should you just be eating cheese alone or string alone okay there's no argument to be made here yeah, so again, if you're watching this, you're enjoying it, make sure you sub to the channel. You know, go find the button that says subscribe and like you horny men do, put the D in it. Get it? So you'll be subscribed. Uh hit the thumbs up button too if you're enjoying. If you're listening via podcast, the best thing you can do for us is leave us a rating and review. That would be super, super appreciated. We're trying to uh rise up these Spotify rankings, which are which is hard to do, but we can do it with y'all. So that would be wonderful. And then, of course, go download the Underdog Fantasy app and, and run off some Superflex leagues, baby. What do we got? They also have slow drafts and fast drafts for Superflex. So if you want to do 30 seconds per pick, you can do that. If you want to do eight hours per pick, you want to, you know, enter like 10 different drafts, do eight hours per pick, and then just have a pick every like 20 minutes that you don't have to stress about. And you can make your pick after an hour. Like that's the premier way to do it. I only do fast drafts when I'm doing content for the drafts. Do y'all fucking feel me? Oh, let's go. All right. So mm, still some good running backs on the board. We have real quarterback. Davis Mills, I feel like, is a fucking dynamite pick in this format. Um, you have any, mm, damn, you know what I... Oh, you know what I'm about to do right now? I'm about to do something sexy. We are... Because we already have Josh Allen. We're going to take Gabe Davis. We are going to monopolize this passing offense outside of Stephon Diggs. This will be a pretty unique lineup, I think, in this type of format. This is I really like this team right now. So we have Josh Allen. We have Justin Fields. We have Mac Jones, Jamonta Williams, Leonard Fournette, Michael Thomas, Gabe Davis, Kyle Pitts, Dawson Knox. So on the on the days where Josh Allen goes nuts and it does not involve digs heavily, uh, this team is going to go fucking bonkers. Muff bonkers. Oh, Juju. Great fucking pick down at the 9-2. Juju will be interesting in terms of the com the commentary I kind of just laid out in like for value purposes. Because he, I mean, he's a really good pick right now at 9 2 after Terry Kill went to Miami. If they end up drafting a couple first round wide receivers, that that changes quickly. If they, you know, if they draft LaVisca Chenault, you're almost like putting two similar players on the field together, both like really athletic slot receivers. That becomes a little bit messier. So I, I could see, I, I don't think Juju drops past the ninth round, though. So I think he's a, a value pocket where, like, say they don't use a first round pick on, on a wide receiver or they, they take one that's like completely different than Juju's skill set. He should probably rise up draft board. So right now, I think he's a pretty good value pick down here at nine two. Let's pull up a draft board. Have a day. Have a few days. Rashad Penny at one hundred five. Let's see. Kenneth Walker, Damian Harris, Devin Singletary. That pocket of running backs. Um, I'm still very nervous to take any rookie running backs this year because I have no idea what their draft capital is going to be. I do like uh, Brees Hall, though, because I think he was so good at the combine that he's kind of forced himself into, like, at worst, early day two. But I saw a mock draft. I think Daniel Jeremiah had Brees Hall going to possibly Buffalo. I mean, that would obviously shoot him. He'd probably be like a fucking second, third round pick if he went to Buffalo. But Kenneth Walker, I really don't know where his draft capital is going to be. He could end up being a third round, third round pick, and in that case, like that makes me a little nervous. Damian Harris makes me fuck everyone down here. I'm this is just like sweat central, ninth, tenth round. You can't be feeling too good about this. Everyone's got question marks. So we got Damian Harris, who's now obviously competing with Ramondre Stevenson. They re-signed James White. They were looking at Leonard Fournette. So it's like, man, what the fuck are they doing in that backfield? Just let Damian Harris rip off twenty carries a game. Let Ramondre play, play the passing down role and have. Have a dip, have a fucking day. Get rid of James White. Jesus Christ. Why are you resigning him again? How is he still in the NFL? He doesn't do anything. He just catches the ball and falls down. It's so annoying. Devin Singletary. I mean, they tried to bring in JD McKissick. I I can't imagine they go into the year with just Singletary and Zach Moss, who they obviously don't trust. I 
there's no way Singletary rips off the, the, the type of numbers and stats that he did at the end of last year. I just have no trust in that. Cooks will be with Mills, but we saw some good games, so I think Cooks a really good value pick here. Tyler Lockett, hell no, I'm not drafting him until we see an actual quarterback in Seattle. Penny, you know, Noah, Noah likes him, I guess. Whatever, do with that as you please. Kareem Hunt, I feel like, is kind of a nice value too because he is he's in the same exact situation as he's been, but now they have a better quarterback there. Dealing great value at 9-11. This Tony Ayuk pairing here is like a really sexy value for me. Sexy, sexy Gronk. Uh, did Gronk resign? Has Gronk resigned officially? I don't remember, but... Regardless, that's a fucking steal because he's going to resign. He, see, that's that's like you want 11th round Gronk or 10th round Gronk because in two weeks when he officially resigns, he's going to be 7th round Gronk. Corderell, I don't have a take on Corderell yet other than I love him. I love that they resigned him as a Falcons fan, but like he was so bad over the second half of the year for fantasy. He was bad. Bad. Yeah. We are almost up. Who we looking at? Probably don't need to go in on a fourth quarterback right now. Got some running bikes. Hmm. Uh, okay, so we've got Traylon Burks, Chase Claypool, Garrett Wilson. Hmm. I'm probably going to go with two skilled players. Chase, I, I kind of like Chase in Miami. I think he's going to be a big-time pass catcher there. No one else really intrigues me on this list. I kind of like both Miami running backs at these values. Chase Edmonds at 128 and Raheem Mostert at 152. I almost think Raheem Mostert's like a fucking... Uh, like an amazing pick down here. I think, I think Mike McDaniels is going to do what they did in San Francisco and give him as much work as he could possibly handle until he just passes away. Ramondre, really hard to trust after the rumors of, well, one, bring James White back, but bring Leonard Fournette in, too. Like, I really don't like that. Spiller, I'm not a huge fan as, as a prospect. Rashad White, I am a really big fan of, of as a prospect, but I'm not sure if the NFL feels the same way. So we're going to pivot to wide receiver here. Uh, yeah, you know what? Actually, I have a feeling I, pr I should probably take Olave. Oh, fuck, I missed my pick. Damn it. Who do we get? Okay, cool. I was I was kind of deciding between Traylon Burks and Garrett Wilson. Uh, where, where the reason I think so this this is actually a kind of a big deal. I'm kind of a big deal. So hold on. The reason these back end rookie wide receivers right now are a really good fucking pick. Like I think this should be a clip actually because I'm about to spill some fucking beautiful juice right here. These rookie wide receivers. I'm not sure exactly where they're going to land, but you have Traylon Burks, Garrett Wilson, Drake London, Chris Olave. Jameson Williams that are, you know, maybe one or two of them go like top 15 or top 20 or whatever, but there is the pocket where a lot of rookie wide receivers get drafted in the NFL draft from picks 20 to 32 in the first round. And this just so happens to be a year where it's like a perfect storm of Kansas city and green Bay, both having multiple picks in that area, both having elite quarterbacks, Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes, and both needing wide receivers really badly. So you're going to see at least two of these exciting rookies end up landing with Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes on depth charts that are completely fucking wide open for targets. So whether it's Alave or Garrett Wilson, you should be shooting your shots right now in underdog drafts for these rookie wide receivers because as soon as Chris Alave lands in Green Bay, as soon as Garrett Wilson lands in Kansas City, their ADPs shoot up into the fifth, sixth round, okay? So hear me. I plead with you. Do the fucking thing. There might be no better value in drafts than these rookie wide receivers right now because two of them are landing. Oh, Harry Conk. I wonder if you guys are in my draft right now. I wonder if you're in the live stream. I wonder if anyone's in the fucking live stream. Oh, we got some questions. Any chance we're sleeping on Zach Wilson? O-line looking good. They'll probably add a wide receiver to him in the draft. Just seem to be some good Z dude. Uh, yeah, dude. I'm Listen, I'm, I'm de I definitely haven't given up on Zach Wilson by any fucking stretch of the imagination. I think they're doing everything that they possibly can to build around him and see if he can succeed at the NFL level. So, yeah. Uh, Zach Wilson's not a guy that I'm fading this year. I mean, you're, I'm not like, he's not going to be on my fucking must draft list, but he won't be on my fade list. Um, we'll see what they do in the draft. I was, I was going to be, I was actually really, really rooting for Tyree kill to go to New York and be on the Jets roster. That would have been sexy, but listen, they're, they're building up the O line. They're building up the run game. They're building up the, the weapons on the outside. Like they're doing everything they possibly can for Zach Wilson to succeed. So like, yeah, a lot of the times if you're not an elite passer, if you're not on one side of the spectrum, like pinpoint accuracy, or just really bad at throwing the ball, then you are usually a result of the weapons around you um, in terms of fantasy quarterback production. So with Zach Wilson, I think he falls right into that fucking spectrum of being a dude who is, you know, rising tide because of the offense. So I, I, I like Zach Wilson. I wish they would have got fucking Hill or brought in a good free agent, but hopefully they use I, – I hope they get Drake London. That would be fucking beautiful. Is Dalvin Cook's little brother any good? I remember he played well in the CFB. Yeah, uh, James Cook is 
he uh, actually I'll, I'll talk about him in tomorrow's video or yeah, you guys are in the live stream, so you'll see it tomorrow. Tomorrow's video is my top 12 rookie running back rankings and then player comps for each of those guys. James Cook is undersized, so he's smaller than Dalvin Cook. He's, he's not anywhere near the runner that Dalvin Cook is, um, but he is explosive. So he's like, I think he's like 199 pounds he weighed in at the combine. Ran a 4.42, though. So he's a good athlete. He's going to be much more of a pass catcher at the next level. I think um, a good comp for him was Andre Ellington, that player profiler had up. Uh, he's definitely in that mold where he's going to be more of a weapon than he is an actual, like, all-around running back. So he, he's exciting. He did have that big game, which is what put him on the radar for a lot of people and the fact that he's Dalvin Cook's brother. But, like, he, I, I don't see him being, like, a huge factor at the next level. He'll be a really good role player for an NFL team, though, for sure. What else do we go up? Nipples. Oh, you saw it, huh? Have you been preparing for the 2022 BDG guy? We got to figure out if we can do that. I'm always – I stay fucking ready, dude. Thoughts on where Fuller or Parker will go? Uh, Will Fuller, I – Ultimately, I think he ends up in Cleveland, reuniting with Deshaun, Parker. Um, maybe I'm tripping. Hold on a sec. I'm on a clock. Good pick with Alan Lazard there. Uh, running back situation's ugly right now. Oh, my God. Ooh, I like Tyler Boyd being left here. I like Jacoby Myers, too. I think I might stack Jacoby with – I think I'm going to stack Jacoby with Mac. What else do we have here? Christian Watson, Sky Moore. Uh, I might take Visca here, man. Where there's smoke, there is fucking fire. And he is lit with gasoline when it comes to KC. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take Tyler Boyd right now. Just play it safe. Give me a little floor in the wide receiver position because right now I have a lot of risky picks. So Tyler Boyd makes me feel a little bit more secure. Oh, Jacoby Myers. I was listening to – I forget who. Uh, it, was, it was a Roto Underworld podcast. It was with Josh Larkey and Cody Carpentier. They were going through some of their proprietary statistics of, like, wide receivers with success versus man coverage. And just like win rate, you know, just like beating your defensive back. And Jacoby Myers, I think, was like top 10 in the NFL, which is not unsurprising because he rated really highly last year. Matt Harmon's like reception perception. So he's a very clean route runner. But that offense just didn't lend itself to fantasy points. So I think Jacoby, just like last year, I was really, really hyping him up in best ball drafts. I think he's uh, undervalued and, and a really good value in drafts this year, too. London, Burks, or Wilson would be sexy. Yeah, both of them are very good. Uh, Adam, your question was Fuller or Parker. Uh, are you talking about Devontae Parker? I think he's still in Miami, no? They signed him to an extension like a year or two ago, so I think he's still there. Unless you're talking about someone else, I'm just you know tripping and I can't think of. What will Packers do at wide receiver draft? Is Amari Rodgers not good or second-year breakout? Uh, to answer this second question, um, I don't think Amari Rodgers is that good. I think he's like a really, really shit version of Debo Samuel, like an unathletic small version of Debo, which who knows what that gets you in this league. So, I mean, he'll have the opportunity to because obviously there's no one on the depth chart. Uh, at, at wide receiver, I imagine they go really heavy at it in the draft. I think they have I think they have two firsts and two seconds. Let's see. Oh, so do they not have their first round pick? Round one, number 22 from the Raiders. Oh, okay, so they have 20. This is what I'm talking about. Like they have the 22 and 28 which is where those wide receivers are going to be drafted probably. And they're an extremely fucking wide out needy team. And then they have 53 and 59. So I can't imagine that at least two of these picks are not wide. They could literally revamp their entire uh, wide receiver group. Just, just, just fucking take Olave and Garrett Wilson or take Traylon Burks and uh, Jameson Williams or something. And boom, like you're set for the next five years at wide receiver. So yeah, I, I would, I would find it hard pressed for them not to take at least two of those top 60 picks and use it at wide receiver. Uh, I want to see the Chiefs. Yep, so they have the 29 and the 30 and then the 15 62. So, again, 29, 30 is like premier spot for those rookie wide receivers. So one of these guys is going to end up in Green Bay. One of these guys is going to end up in Kansas City, and those guys are going to shoot up draft boards. Who do we like here? Jarvis is interesting. I ultimately think he ends up back in Cleveland. The question becomes, though, like if Cleveland gets rid of Baker, what are they doing for the first – I mean, they should they should just fucking – say fuck Baker and, and make him play for them, you know, until Watson gets healthy. He's on the rookie contract. Have him play the first eight games until he's not suspended anymore and let Watson rip. So, I mean, it's tough to get excited about the Cleveland wide receivers without knowing the Watson suspension deal, but this is a tough range for quarterbacks in terms of, like, who you want as your fourth quarterback in this league. I would not use it on Drew Locke because I think there's a chance that Seattle either drafts quarterback or ends up as the Baker landing spot. Corral, Ritter, and Howell. I'm not sure which of these guys ends up in the first round of the draft. Very, very sure that Pickett and Malik Willis will be first rounders. Then there's shit Carson Strong, who's never good, and people like pretended he was a quarterback one. He was always terrible. And then you have Ritter, 
Corral and Howell. If I had to guess, Corral is almost definitely going to be the first one drafted out of those guys. But you never know with the NFL teams, man. They just lock on to guys they like. I don't know if the, these guys will start right away either. Like someone in the late rounds might take, or the late, late part of the first round might take Corral and he might sit for a year or something like that. Um, Ritter and Howell, yeah, I just don't know if any of them are QB, like NFL QB ready right now. And you just can't predict where they're going to end up. So it's it's tough to draft those guys. But I think, I mean, Howell and, and Ritter both have nice upside because they're both mobile quarterbacks, like very mobile. Running bikes, what do we got? We got Javante, Leonard Fournette, Chase Edmonds, wide receivers. We got five, QBs we got three. We probably don't need to focus on tight end. Actually, we probably don't need to take a tight end again. Fuck it. Let's show some respect to the god. The only thing that's a lock is I miss at least fucking four picks during these drafts. God damn it. So we just took a backup quarterback. I just ruined like a perfectly built team. Fuck, this is the first time I've actually been mad that we auto-drafted a player. Fuck. Man, Jeff's a little intriguing. You know I, you know what? I'm, I'm going to say fuck it and, and grab Visca on the hopes that he ends up moving to Kansas City. All right, I got to pee for a little while. For a long while. I'm just going to pee for the rest of my life. And we're bike. Hello. We're going to do a little unboxing on stream right now. We got two packages. Did I miss picks already? Probably. No, I didn't coming up. Fucking perfect timing, Nick. Look at you. Today's your, today's your fucking day. I feel good. I feel like this video is like not horrible. Most of the time I come away from videos like oh, that was shit. Fucking unquality content. Uh, can't show you guys that. It's kind of a private gift. Yo, why is this the hardest fucking thing in the world to open? Oh, let's go. These are like giant clips. They're the, you hang them up in the kitchen and basically they're like they hold your towels. I've realized that I should make a pick first. Marvin Jones, goat. Big fucking goat vibes. I just took two Jacksonville receivers. Fuck. Um, what's good at the running back position? Absolutely fucking nothing. Oh, I love Zamir White. Big fan of Zamir. Oh, I also love Eno Benjamin. I'm gonna go Eno for right now. So my entire like I have to decorate this entire office because all those pieces of shit out there don't do nothing. Um. So I have to decorate it and order all these things. And like the extent of my home decor talent basically like begins and ends with like memes. I feel like we're the, like the museum of memes, like everything decoration wise is like meme related, you know, and like this just adds to it. This is fucking sick though. I'm pumped about these. Oh, we just got a comment. So editor Ike, I've been telling him like, I want to get more into photography as a brand. So like take pictures about what's going on behind the scenes. And he posted this picture of like, you know, if you follow us, BDGE double underscore. So it was like he took one of me working. He took one of himself working. He took one of Tony working. And then he took like a shitty picture of animal. I actually think I started the episode off with talking about this. And he, and uh, the caption was model employees dot 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 and animal. And then this guy goes off. He said unsolicited opinion as the head of brand. If you keep shitting on animal will have an effect on his morale. The dynamic changes when you are the boss. I know you think you're kidding and you're busting your boy's chops, but over time, if it continues, it will cause a rift both professionally and personally. <laughs> Random internet guy opinion. You think I fucking posted that myself? I didn't post that. I just took pictures and posted. You fucking people on the internet are so weird, dude. Yeah. I miss you a little all the time. Y'all like Bryce Vine? I'm a huge fan of Bryce Vine. Great artist. He makes a lot of sad music. What else we got? Sorry, I lose stamina by like this 18th round. Do we have any more comments? Uh, much appreciated, Nick. I think they need to man up and just stack those wide receivers and draft like you said. Glad to have. Yeah, I mean, like, dude, they don't have a lot of flaws on their team, but they just continue to not give Rodgers some weapon power on the outside, and it's fucking silly. Jahan Dotson, Keyshawn Vaughn. This is yeah. This is another spot. Jahan Dotson, I feel like, is actually a really, really good pick here. He is a sleeper to be one of those receivers he's kind of like a i'm not gonna say a knockoff chris Olave, but he's probably a little very stylistically similar to like the tyler lockett the ty hilton mold we're a little bit undersized more so in like the skinny department but super crisp route runner great separator he is a uh dark horse to be one of those guys that's drafted to either kc or green bay i could see him um having a team fall in love with him so dotson is a guy that you need to be targeting right now in underdog drafts before the NFL draft happens. I also think he's still going to end up as like a an early second round wide receiver regardless, and that probably just makes him a good um, investment. Antonio Brown, dude, the Chiefs should just fucking sign him. Brown and, and, 
and uh, Aaron Rodgers would make some some really good content. That would be like they would love each other for about six weeks, and then it would it would go south so fucking quickly. I miss you a little all the time. I'm leaving for Boston. Like literally, I was supposed to be on a train an hour ago. I'm already late for that. But I'm going to Boston tonight, today, Tuesday, Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. By the time you guys watch this, I might be biking New York already. I'm going for the Bleachers concert. I got a tattoo, Bleachers tattoo on my fucking arm. You know, I'm such a fucking corny fanboy. I've been trying to go see the Bleachers live for three years now, like legitimately. Let me tell you a little story about that after I make my pick. I know you guys are probably like, fuck this guy. Talk about fucking fantasy football, dude. We don't care about your fucking non-robotic lifestyle. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Sorry. Uh, let's see. Like, I guess. Yeah. They also re-signed Randall Cobb, I forgot. So, like, Amari Rogers definitely not going to be a fucking thing this year. He's just not going to be a thing overall. Ricky Seals. Didn't Ricky Seals Jones just sign with the... Giants, if I'm, if I'm as smart as I think I am, if my brain's as big as I think it is. We have our four quarterbacks. We have two tight ends. I'm going to roll with two tight ends because they're very high-end tight ends. Um, typically, I'd probably, especially if they're 20 rounds, might consider a third tight end if I went, like, not heavy on them in the draft or they're just, like, not talented dudes, not good at fantasy. Um, but they're fine here. I'm probably going to take at least one more running back. Who do we have? Chuba, some Michelle, Trey Sermon, the GOAT. Is there anyone that has, like, upside to carve out a big role? Uh, Damian Williams in Atlanta kind of makes me a little bit hard, to be honest with you. He just basically makes Mike Davis redundant. He's just, like, better than Mike Davis in every aspect. He's, like, just more athletic. He's got the size, better pass catcher. Maybe, eh, they're probably similar in pass catching, but, like, I, I think he's got a little bit of upside, sneaky upside in Atlanta. But there's a very good chance that they end up taking a running back in the draft. If they don't, though, Damian Williams will probably skyrocket up drafts. How many wide receivers you got? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we need more than that. Um, I'm actually going to take Randall Cobb here and just say fuck it. He's somehow just going to be way too big a part of this offense, and it's going to be gross. So that's my 18th and 19th round pick. Yeah, so the Bleachers. Bleachers are my favorite. They're not the Bleachers. They're just Bleachers. They're my favorite band in the world. And uh, they are from Jersey, and they're from down south in Asbury Park. And they play at this venue called Stone Pony every year. And it's like kind of like their hometown fucking venue. And because they're like a very popular band now, that shit is like really hard to get tickets for. And they sells out and like it's impossible. But one night, this is when I lived in Williamsburg when I was in Brooklyn a couple of years ago. They announced on like Instagram or Twitter or whatever it was that I saw that they were releasing tickets for the, the Stone Pony show. And I was like, fucking sick. This was like in April or May. And the show was scheduled to be in July. So they released it and I was drunk and I was like, oh, I'm fucking going in right now. So I just unsolicitedly bought four tickets to the show. Dropped like $400 to go without knowing who was going to go, without even knowing the actual fucking dates of the show. And again, I was a little bit under the influence. But the next morning I woke up excited. I was like, let's fucking go. Got tickets to the bleaches for the summer. It's going to be fun. And I looked at the email that I got and realized that the the concert was for the following July. So they released tickets to this concert a year and like three months in advance. So I was like, ah, okay, well, I got to wait a year and three months. Cool, whatever. I'll just like side table it. I'll fucking Jordan love it. And hopefully by the next year, right, it was a good draft pick. It was a good purchase. But sort of like Jordan Love, by the time the next summer rolled around, it was fucking COVID. And they canceled that show. So they're like, we're going to push it till the next summer. So now I'm sitting here two years or like a year, and I don't know what the math is at the point, but it's a long fucking time. And this year rolls around, and I'm finally like, okay, I can go. And they scheduled the concert to be on Memorial Day weekend or Labor Day weekend, Labor Day weekend. And Labor Day weekend's when we have our E-Town Get Down drafts, when I have all my fantasy drafts, where I have a lot of shit going on that like I already have plans. So I couldn't even go to the fucking concert that I bought tickets for two and a half years ago. So I was very depressed about it. But then they did a tour. They announced they were doing shows for just a specific album. So they're playing through the album Strange Desire, which is my favorite album in the world. If you need any sad music, just good indie pop music, Strange Desire by Bleachers is elite. It is the 101, and no one else has a pick in the draft. Strange Desire by Bleachers. They're playing through it tonight. 
but it's in Boston. So I got to get to Boston. Long story of saying I got to get the fuck out of here, so please get to my pick. I'm the last pick of the 20th round, of course. Um, you know what? I'm just actually going to bounce now because I actually really need to go. Like, I'm going to miss my other train. But here's the draft board. Ike, you can do what you want with this. I'm sorry we didn't get the last fucking nine picks. I would have taken... Uh, you know what? Let's just set up a queue then. Set up a queue. Marquez. Don't hate it. Wow, I hate just about everybody else in this. This is so bad. Uh, I still got a little bit of faith in Diami, I suppose. Tyler Johnstein. Let's go. This is this is something else. Holy shit. Yeah, these are, we have some we have some bad players available. Uh, do I need it? Yeah, I probably need another wide receiver. You know what? Let's fucking... Oh, there goes Callaway. Sony, Tyler Algier, Gaskin. No, this is ugly. Let's just hope that we get one of the wide receivers. Actually, you know, we could just wait. It's four more fucking picks. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed, we, uh, we do these streams every single week. And make sure you're in the Discord. Make sure you are on our text list, which I believe the number is down below in the description as well. So you just shoot it over text and you'll be automatically added to thy list. And, uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel. You get videos much better, more concise, less fucking bullshit-ass videos normally all the time. Diami, Tyler Johnson, Diami, Tyler Johnson. Who do we like more? Eh, I kind of want to give Diami another shot, man. I kind of do. All right, yeah, fuck it. Let's take Diami and run with it. That is it. Go sign up on Underdog. Like the video if you like the video. Rating and review on iTunes. And I will see y'all... Uh, Noah's got a video Sunday. I think Mike's Monday. I'll be bike on Tuesday. Love you. Bye.